Hey there folks and friends, Connected Dots here. Today's date is Monday, October 27, 2014. Okay, if there was ever an op I should say a time, a great time to have a Geiger counter at your home on and operating, well that would have been last night in Illinois. They've had a radioactive release. I'm not sure aware of that, but uh, according to FEMA here, FEMA Illinois, they're telling you what? Uh, don't worry about it. The leak is contained to the building. That's an absolute lie. I got some video footage here. I got two videos coming up near the end of this video, but first let's dig a little bit of story. Let's dig into this, this whole story and find out what kind of dirt we can find on this company. And yeah, loads of it. It all, it, believe it or not, it goes links up with Obama, it links up with uh, the Federal Reserve, disgusting here, even the XL pipeline, it's all about money to these people. So uh, you may have noticed here, it says uranium exafluoride released last night at Honeywell Works, Metropolis, Illinois, and it was confirmed here at 8 o'clock there was a release. Uh, you'll see, you'll hear in the video how the, the sirens have sounded and Honeywell guards, well, have told people to shelter in, close windows and turn off air conditionings. No, they didn't. I don't believe that for a second. You'll see the release here. This is not small, folks. Y you can see it looks like a, 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 a cloud bank really rolling in. I live here on the West Coast, and I, that's kind of what it looks like. When a cloud bank comes rolling in through town sometimes, you'll, you'll be on one side of the sidewalk, it'll be clear, and on the other side, it, it can be full of, well, in that case, it would be uh, fog, but in this case, it was a radioactive plume here. Now, it goes on even worse here. It says here that the Honeywell converts raw uranium into uranium hexafluoride, and it's then pumped across the Ohio River to the Putaka plant to manufacture nuclear fuel for nuclear power plants. And as you can see here, two major releases. Let's get into that, but first, Let's get into this story here. So this story was published August 25th, 2014, and it talks about the 135 remaining employees here, how they've been in lockout with this plant. Um, they're United Steelworkers Local 7-669, and it's all because of a three-year contract that just recently expired here. So they've been locked out since the start of August because the, the, the contract expired. Well, Turns out, folks, uh, the last time there are, it expired or they got this contract um, signed, prior to them getting signed, they're on locked out for 14 months. Now, there's, it's disgusting, this whole thing. And I'm going to go over it very quickly, and all the links are down below if you want to go just read the story yourself instead of listening to my annoying voice. But basically here it says that the uh, plant spokesman said that there was $300 million that was lost in operating costs here over the last 10 years and the plant is just now starting to break even? Yeah, right. Anyways, if you go read a little further, it says Honeywell's Metropolis plant is the only U.S. facility that converts uranium oxide into uranium hexafluoride, which is then enriched to be used as fuel in nuclear power plants. Hold on a second. The only facility in the United States that does this kind of conversion, and you're trying to tell me that for the past 10 years you've lost $300 million in operating costs, losses? Folks, can you spell bullshit? I hope so, because my 10-year-old can, and I'm sure if he read this story, he'd tell you the same thing. This is an absolute lie here. So I'm going to go over some of the rest of the story here. It talks about... Um, Ever since the very beginning of this lockout here, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has jumped in here with more precautions, okay? It, it, it increased the safety inspections to once a week instead of just once a month. It said that it found no significant issues, okay? It actually brought in staff, well, aka scabs is what they're being called here, but basically these subcontractors uh, were brought in to run the plant here because it says here they want to be able to operate the plant for a long term without any issues. Well, hello Houston, we've had a, a, an issue here. So they said they were satisfied and uh, they could training with, with the appropriate training and these people could run the plant and no issues. Well, they've had an issue here. So the, um, it turns out that this plant here since mid-2012 They've spent $40 million worth of safety upgrades that were required by the NRC in the wake of the disaster of the Fukushima nuclear plant. By the way, they're not telling you it's, it's an ongoing triple meltdown. Isn't that funny how our news never really gives you the full story? Could it have something to do with the fact that Reuters is owned by the Rothschilds? I hope so, because the Rothschilds are going to tie into this story one more time. Yes, believe it or not, it's all about money and power. So, 
Uranium dioxide uh, is uh, uranium oxide, and yes, it is radioactive. It comes in various colors. Many of you know of it as the raw yellow cakes. It comes in a yellowish brown. It also comes in black. I'll leave a link down below if you want to go look this stuff up. But basically, I'm going for the juice of the story here because this is where it starts getting really ugly in this session here. So you find out here that they've been converting 150 million pounds of this raw yellow cake uh, from uranium mining into UF6, okay, which is uranium exafluoride, and which is, as I mentioned, it's enriched here over in Padaka, and they use it for power plants, and guess what? Nuclear weapons productions applications. Isn't that nice? Yeah. They're making money off it, and they're going to blow the crap out of some brother or sister that has a different colored skin than you, and, I, and they don't agree with the same thing as we do disgusting here and you know they even make their anyways I don't want to get off track and try and stick with the story here because when I read this thing I uh, it's very upsetting to me because I can see the BS so as I'd mentioned here um, this this deal that they just this contract that just ended here was signed because of a 13 month well I found another story says 14 month lockout here back in 2010 2011 now it gets dirty right here with David I think his last name is Cote but it could be a uh, coat but uh, um, David Cote, uh, the Honeywell CEO here, has a cozy relationship with President Obama. And Honeywell was the leading corporate contributor to the Democratic Party for the 2010 elections. Now, if you're following me back, back in the day here, I was been doing these stories on various environment spills. And one of the ones I covered was the Gulf oil spill. And I showed how back when the Gulf oil spill went down, Obama had gone golfing in Hawaii, wasn't dealing with the Gulf oil spill, and then I also showed you how his largest campaign donator was who? That's right, BP oil. So that's why he didn't do anything, and in fact, when the restaurateurs were no longer buying the seafood from the Louisiana Gulf Coast area, what did Obama do? He stepped back in again and bought all of the seafood so the, all of the fishermen could continue working and collecting all that contaminated food, seafood, which was contaminated with the Corexit and the oil spill oil leak, whatever you want to call it, it was bottom of the ocean, they messed up there and the rig fell over so it was leaking all over and they sprayed Corexit and I showed in my store in my videos how the Corexit was manufactured by a company that was owned by the Rothschild family and they had a secret ingredient that they didn't release to the um, uh, whatever you want to call it, the when, when you get a product license before you start spraying it anywhere you got a higher license they never released the, the secret ingredients. Here we have the secret ingredient being sprayed, and uh, I've even showed how some of the restaurants back in the Gulf oil spill had were uh, the seafood was they were finding Gulf oil spill in the seafood in the crabs. I'm not sure if you remember those stories here. And here I found that even just recently, this is January 8th, 2014. Honeywell again International pay a, uh, a civil penalty fine of ninety thousand dollars for three dangerous dangerous releases of hydrogen fluoride. No, it's not radioactive, but it's a dangerous, very dangerous acid. And yeah, uh, $90,000 for three, that's $30,000 for dangerous release. I can't believe it. I, it's all about making money. I hope you realize that. This is all about making money. They don't give a shit about us. They just got to make money. So it goes on to say here that he's also an outspoken supporter of the Keystone XL pipeline which would ship oil from the environmentally destroyed tar sands in the region of Canada. I'm not sure if you know about this. So basically we have sand that's just laden with oil and, and they pull in the heavy machinery and start digging it up and you have these massive uh, uh, dump trucks that are <laughs> pulling it out and it just leaves one big massive mess. It's uh, disgusting. I've actually, uh, uh, someone I knew brought me a small handful or half a handful of this black tar sand. And uh, that uh, black tar sand is, it, it's disgusting. It stinks. Even though it was wrapped in a plastic bag, I could, you could smell it. It's gross. It leaves a mess. And many of you may know about these tailoring ponds here. Um, we have wildlife that actually land in these ponds thinking they're a natural lake where they can actually eat fish and whatnot and yeah take a rest while they're on their migration route from north to south or south to north and guess what well we have massive amounts of ducks that are dying in this but because it's so far away chances are you'll never hear about it it's one of those dirty secrets in Canada 
Okay, continuing on here with Dirty Secrets here, it reports that in May 10, 2012, the Honeywell officials announced that the union members, that they must clear the plan immediately, and they privately said to the workers that this was due to a sabotage of plant equipment. The NRC and the media reported that this was due to equipment failure. Ha <laughs> ha, you're getting two different stories there. So here on May 12th, though, we get to find out from a uh, union local Facebook page that a contractors, private contractors, were called in from the Shaw Group and these contractors are getting paid twice as much as laid off union workers. Can you imagine that, eh? It's all about money, yet they're calling in a contracting company and getting charged twice as much. So uh, it goes on to say here that on May 14th, a UF6 uh, release occurred at the plant. Okay, so the contract workers, the union workers, I mean, are long, no longer there. We have the replacement guys in here, and now we have a release. Oh, guess what's best here? On May 18th, four days later, a notice is published in the Federal Register of a change that Honeywell uses to measure radiation dosage for its workers, allowing up to 20 times more uranium exposure than previously. Seriously, 20 times more. If you were following me back uh, on my Fukushima stories from day one here, on Fukushima Day 777, you can Google that, Fukushima Day 777, I reported how your President Obama had um, risen the acceptable cancer death rate after drinking U.S. water for 30 years. It used The acceptable cancer death rate used to be 1 in 10,000, and he rose it to 1 in 23. Can you see how they don't care about you? It's all about knocking you off, making money. They don't care about the environment. They don't care about you guys. You'll see in the video footage that I have here, a cloud of radioactive, uh, a plume of radioactive um, uranium here is going through town, and these people don't give a shit. Uh, it's just, it's disgusting. So again, it goes on to say here that, again, on May 30th, a much larger UFC release occurred at the plant, you know? According to them, the, the NRC was roughly about 21 pounds, you know, but they hadn't done a direct inspection. So it could definitely be more and probably is more here. So it goes on to say that, uh, hold on a second here. In November 4th, 2014, 2013, it was reported that the refrigerator in the control room at the Honeywell plant was contaminated with uranium. But here's where it gets really juicy. On March 7, 2014, Honeywell CEO David Cote was elected to the board of directors of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. Can you, can, can you connect the dots on this one now? I hope so. And look at this. On May 4th, 2014, the Huffington Post reported that the commissioner, William Hustendorf of the NRC, had invested in Honeywell stock during the lockout. Yeah, disgusting, eh, folks? They don't care about you. Okay, I'm going to finish it up here with uh, two uh, clips here I found on this whole situation. Uh, this one here, it seems like he just arrived, or actually, he's probably on site because I said there's a lockout here, so they're, they're probably standing around 24-7 here during this lockout. There's the plume of UF-6 leaving Honeywell's property. There's Honeywell's sign in the background. No fog out tonight. You see it's a clear, clear night. And there's the cloud of either UF-6 or HF going right over the fence. Okay, you get to see here that this was not a small release much bigger than what they're saying, definitely not contained to a building. There's no doubt about that. This is not contained to a building. This is out hitting neighborhoods and, uh, you know, people are just getting ready to go to bed or maybe sitting around watching TV on the internet and here comes a dose of radiation. They have no idea it's coming at them. Okay, let me just pause this and move it forward here. Okay. There's a security guard walking around. Doesn't look like he's warning anyone. Like I said, that was BS. They don't care about you. It's all about money, folks. Hope you enjoyed the info and share it with someone you love.